What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Tiger King's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Kang Toys Ferocious. Now, this is coming out, I believe, after a sit-down Saturday where I'm tackling this. I have a lot to say about this piece. An awful lot. I'm gonna try not to be redundant. I'm gonna try not to be repetitive of what we cover in the sit-down Saturday, but I haven't done that yet, so bear with me. Yes, I wanted to get them out in the opposite order. Yes, that would have made more sense. It's not how the logistics of my life worked out. I apologize in advance. That being said, this is on loan to me from Joel. Joel W. I really appreciate it because it's getting dry out there, but things are starting to release again. So I'll tell you what, if I make it through this thing unscathed in terms of content, I'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back, but don't you worry. I'll save one or two for you. But that being said, I want to talk about this guy. I want to talk about all three modes, but first I want to talk about accessories. So he has this sword. You have the metallic orangish yellowish paint here with the silver tampo paint done on top and then the translucent plastic that makes up the handle and the kind of teeth here. I don't think that the teeth look good. I don't think the translucent plastic looks good necessarily on this. It's like a smoky effect. I think it would have been sharper had it been something else, but sculpt wise, it's fine. He'll also hold that just fine with a tab in the palm. Typical masterpiece style. He also comes with a gun and it's painted orange and orange is not an easy color to paint as well. We've talked about yellow in the past. Orange is tricky as well and it's done really well. A little fuzzy around the edges, but overall definitely presentable and nice tampo paint on both sides. It also extends, collapses obviously, and you have the handle here that can flip up and down. Once again, that will tab into his palm, typical masterpiece style. The gun can also be stored in this peg here on the back of uh, tiger mode. And to be fair, you could probably store it there in robot mode too, if you so desired. And of course he comes with the combiner hand as well, which is styled very similar to the Toy World hands, right? The Toy World Zeta hands. We have the hinge at the bottom, a hinge at the first knuckle, and then hinge a second and tertiary knuckles for fully articulated hands. Also, this whole thumb assembly and this piece are completely reversible so that you can, well, they can rather take them and wrap them around the other side. And now they've only created one mold and they can use it two different ways for both hands, which is something else I feel like we've seen them do in the past. So. A lot of similarities here. It is painted beautifully. The orange is painted beautifully. They left the die cast unpainted and it's a nice touch. And then we have the silver here as well as the silver on the spikes of the knuckles and it's a good sculpt. And that will slide on in combined mode around these two tabs here by just lining up that groove. Make sure it's nice and tight like a tiger. And slide it on. Ugh, I'm not gonna push any further than that. It doesn't like it, so I'm leaving it alone, but that's what you wanna do. All right, let's talk about the figure, and I wanna start off by talking about the proportions. I'm not crazy about them. So if this guy is standing straight up and down, like, I, I'm not crazy about the proportions of the legs. The, the length of the legs is all right. It has something to do with the shins and thigh ratio. I also feel like the, the arms are a bit long. I feel like the neck sits up a little bit high off of the shoulders, uh, just stuff like that. The proportions didn't sit well with me right out of the box. Now, aesthetically, it's definitely a stylized take on this character, right? Um, I'm, I can appreciate a stylized look even if it's not necessarily for me. And I also say that to say this, I'm not looking for a super accurate G1 masterpiece either. I'm looking for something that has the G1 vibe, maybe 70% and then has a little bit of extra oomph in it for the 30. Um, I also, well, I think the rest of it we can kind of get into. I will say it is painfully, painfully beauted. It's painfully beauted, you idiot. It's beautifully painted. And the parts that aren't painted end up sticking out because the rest of it is painted so beautifully. I'll talk about it as we go through. So the head, it has light piping, which is silly. It doesn't make any sense. It has no place on a figure of this scale or of this paint quality, to be fair. I also am not crazy about the head sculpt. Something looks really doofy about the eyes. He looks like, uh, you know, something's off there. Something's really off there. We have the metallic red, we have the black, we have the orange paint that is painted gorgeous. This whole head sculpt is painted gorgeous. It's on a ball peg, up to there, down to there, swivel, confused dog look or tiger look, I'll accept either, etc. Moving on to the torso, we have the red metallic, we have the chrome tiger teeth, 
and uh, it's chrome inside as well. Once again, translucent eyes does it a disservice. Sharp silver tampo paint here, 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 and here. The yellow on the sides there is painted beautifully. The silver on the sides here is painted beautifully. The silver tampo paint here is painted beautifully. Top, top, top shelf. Even on the side, this is a die cast piece. They left it unpainted, but it's a smart choice. It ends up working. Uh, on the back, we even have painted details, including tampo paint, this orange metallic, and then tampo paint on top of the yellow. Now, the yellow is even painted, and it's funny because it doesn't look painted, but it is. So I withdraw my earlier criticism. I thought it wasn't. Like, I, I'm just seeing it under the harsh lights like this is making me realize that it is. So good on them. We have a waist swivel. No issues there. And we have a bit of an ab crunch as well. And I think I can get a better one on that. I'll take a look a bit later. For the shoulders, we have universals. They're on a double hinge, though. So you can get singularly out to there, which is a little limited. But you can pull this away and get it up to 90, no problem. You can pull it away a little bit more. Oh, it doesn't go any further. Okay. And then you have a swivel. The swivel's ratcheted and feels good. Because it's a double hinge, you can also get a butterfly joint across the chest and the arm motion back a little bit as well. Squeaky, squeak, 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 but other than that, it's okay. We got tampo paint here for the silver on top of the metallic red. We have tampo paint here on top of the metallic yellow. Beautiful. Bicep swivel, no issue. Double jointed elbow with piping and stuff and sculpt work for the joint. You know I love that. Silver paint for the piping, red metallic, yellow metallic, plus the tampo paint. Good to go. We have a wrist on a swivel it also has an additional hinge so you can get outward movement not much inward the thumb is on a swivel at the base knuckle and then an additional hinge and then maybe an additional hinge yep and then an additional hinge of the thumb so fully articulated the fingers are on ball pegs at the base knuckle and then they're on a secondary hinge which i think is acceptable all right moving on this arm is the same we have hip skirts they're all on ball pegs. They'll all get out of the way. Two reveal ratcheted universals. It's a soft ratchet out to the side for the full Van Dam. It's a hard ratchet forward and back for the full Monty. Just about, I say, let's give it to him. We have a thigh swivel built into the bottom of the universal. The universal isn't the prettiest. However, it does have these flaps that cover down on it. So ultimately, I'm okay with it. We have... It might be, yeah, it's a double jointed knee, but you really only get to utilize the single joint. Either way, it gets you 90 degrees. We have a metallic orange, metallic red, additional flat orange paint with the chrome here, and that might be die cast as well. Tampo paint, tampo paint, tampo paint on top. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. No uh, regrets, no complaints, no criticisms. All right, then we have the ankles. They're on a swivel down here, so you get your ankle rocker. You also get a hinge here to get your ankle tilt up. You get an additional toe tilt up, and you get a hinge here for a toe tilt down. Plus, you get the heel spur, which will articulate down to give you additional support. No complaints. In the back, I'm not exactly sure what the official transformation is. You can kind of have the tail up like this and hide it. You can have the tail down like he doesn't care. Tail, long tail don't care. Doesn't really work, does it? You can have it out to the side if you'd like. There's, um, you know, you can wrap it around a bit, whatever you want to do to kind of hide it. There's some options. And that is this guy in a nutshell. It's a really um, well-painted, well-built thing. Uh, sculpt is kind of, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm actually a huge fan of a lot of the sculpt work. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, proportions and kind of the general layout. The head, I wish it had a completely different head. Uh, the rest of the body, I kind of dig in its own way. Size comparison wise, I wanted to show him first and foremost next to a Fans Toys arm bot. He is a good bit taller. In fact, his head is coming up to about here. So he's gonna be a big boy in terms of combined mode. The question that I want to ask though, 
is did they split the difference between the sizes of the arm bots or limb bots and the torso in order to not make razor claw obnoxiously taller, which will be interesting to see. I have a lot of questions in regard to combined mode. I'm guessing I handled most of that on sit down Saturday, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. However, something to consider an interesting size nonetheless. To continue on, that's the size difference with the unique toys and then X Transbots, who's also pretty much the same size as a Masterpiece car, which should give you some sort of idea scaling wise there, as well as the other contemporary combiner limbs. And then lastly, if you wanted to have him next to the kind of leader of his generation, he's slightly shorter than Galvatron. So for me, that ultimately works. Scale is in the eye of the beholder. It's obviously out of scale to the Sunbow scale chart. It's kind of up to you, how you view these characters, how you want them to work. So let's get him transformed. First thing we're gonna do is open up this flap here. Keep the hand kind of as streamlined as possible, like narrow its look, and then tuck that inside. Close this flap up. Spin at the bicep 180 degrees so that it's facing the other way. Bring the paws, dog paws, down and around until it's sitting up in there. And you want this red piece to kind of cover down on the tampo paint on the forearm. So just keep maneuvering it until you get it loosened up. I had it there for a second. There it is until it covers up that silver and then straighten her out. Same on the other side, open up the flap, tuck in the hand, try to narrow, close that up, spin at the bicep 180, straighten this out, bring down the paws, doll paws, down until it loosens up this red piece. And then if you need to, you can kind of pull away at the sides to get it to kind of cover up uh, that silver bit again. Oh, shh. <laughs> Why do you even buy? You know, speaking of uh, problems with Paul's, dog Paul's, is, have you guys, I hope you guys are, you know, doing what you're supposed to be doing, washing your hands and all that kind of stuff. And, and to be fair, you probably should be uh, doing that anyway. But um, has anybody else noticed just how challenging it is to like, once you've washed your hands, to keep them, you know, consistently, you know, clean and decontaminated. Just coming in, I better decontaminate everything, make it safe for the kids. I gotta, I gotta make this clean, baby. I got a phone, wallet, disinfecting wipes. Ah, you know, I better wash my hands first. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. All right, one wipe should do it. Let me What if I, I'll hold it. All right. All right, how can I do this better? What if, what if I grab it with this and I wrap this around and This and then maybe if, oh my pinky's touching. God. Take the tiger head, bring that out. That'll bring out this whole assembly here. Open up these wings. Take his head, tuck it around with the clowns from out of town, and put it back into there so that when you raise this up, it'll all fit inside of that cavity. Now. These two side flaps or uh, tabs here, they need to tab into the side of the wings to secure the tiger head. So pretty standard, no big deal. Now we have to disconnect this front chest piece and do not be heavy handed. Just clear the shoulders and once you've done so you can take the shoulders and it's almost like they're on a double hinge in fact they may be I'm not sure if I'm focusing on this and rock them down and it came off no matter how hard I try it came off it's on a C clip if it does just take it off it'll make your life easier and you want to do the same thing on this side 
so that you can see they're all tucked in there. To get the chest back on, you'll have to maneuver the C-clip down so that the tabs will line back up with the shoulder pieces. Now, for this back piece here, which is gonna solidify the connection to the head, it's on this bar. And on the bar, it has a ball peg connected to both ends of the bar. You need to have the bar all the way forward, but you need to have the ball peg back. So it's a little tricky to do and it's a little tight. So if you hold this, if you like push the bar forward, but push the orange piece back, it'll help you kind of get it into the right spot. And then once you have it, and I don't know 100%, but there it is, the bar will be caught between the two orange pieces and that will secure the head. Get all the kibbles and bits as much out of your way as possible to allow for a smoother transformation. Um, you can disconnect this for the legs. Let's take this step by step. Undo this side flap here. Move out this back piece here. Move down this shin piece. No. Fold out this orange flap here. Extend the leg. On this piece you've just exposed are little tiny flaps. Rotate them to the opposite side so that they fill in the space between this new ankle-ish knee joint that you've exposed to the other. Do you know what I mean? So they fill in the gap. And now we need to get this red flap and this orange piece to kind of switch places but the red flap also kind of needs to stay in the same place. So we're gonna take the orange piece around. Everything is operating off of this system right here. So we're gonna bring the orange piece around and we're going to simultaneously tuck this red piece back around the other way as we bring the orange piece towards us. And then we're gonna bring the red piece back around and be on the outside so that we have both now the red piece and the orange piece on the outside of the leg with an empty leg space. We need to take this whole assembly here and fold it up into the orange space and then collapse this bottom part down until you can get it connected to form the foot, right, or feet. And then this piece you just wanna fold up as well. This piece, bring out, rotate around 180, and tuck back over. This red flap here, just keep out of the way <clears throat> until we can fold this orange piece around. and cover down on that thigh piece and rotate your leg around. Actually, just get it out of the way. What you want is this orange section with the piston to have covered the thigh and be in line with the back of the animal. You ready for some good news? We gotta do it again. So open this up, open this up, open your orange flap up, open this up, Extend the foot, rock this one sliding piece down to the other side on both sides. We want to swap the placement of this orange piece. And in order to do so, we have to get this red piece up and around it. And I was able to do that. Well, let me not, let me not curse myself. The good news is this red piece here is on a ball peg, so you know if you need to cheat, 
if it pops off, just get her done. Do you know what I mean? All right. So now you've kind of got this out. You got to bring this piece. God, it's scary tight. All the way around. Rock the gray piece into the orange piece and then collapse the lower leg until the two red pieces kind of meet and tab in. <clears throat> Position the foot in a manner that will allow you to rotate the robot foot up. Take your knee pad here, bring it out. You'll notice a swivel inside to bring that around to 180 degrees. Now we need to rotate the thigh into the shin using both hinges. Work until it works. Rotate the leg, get it out of the way. Close your orange flap around it until you get them where the pistons are in line with the backside of the animal. Putting the final touches on this thing is basically three steps. You need to get the tail down and these two yellow tabs will fit in these little pockets here on the inside of the shins. You just gotta work until it works once again and there and once you have it you're good to go it's tricky to do on camera because it's hard to see exactly where these yellow tabs go into place but it'll go once it, once it's right it's gonna go on the underside you need to take these two pieces that you've had to constantly rotate around and bring them down underneath so that these little notches here encapsulate this tabbing system there and because of how tight that swivel armature is it's not fun do yourself a favor set yourself up for success and make sure that the flaps here go underneath the waist flaps and then like you just got to kind of elbow grease it in there then lastly for this section tab in all of your hip skirts that you can which I think it's just two honestly into the side leg panels here and this solidifies you know the up and down now these Hip skirts are on ball pegs, the ball pegs are on hinges, so, or swivels, I guess, technically. Just get them, work until it works, until it's sorted. Lastly, make sure that this collar piece here, that you rotate it down and tab it in to the back here. I will clean it up, we'll take a look at it. So let's talk about cat mode. It's really solid. It's really solid. It's locked in place. Everything kind of moves securely. You do get uh, that same kind of limited ab crunch there. You get a swivel. All of the arm articulation is actually identical with the exception of the paws, the dog paws. They have a hinge here where you can rock it forward and back. And then you have a toe tilt on the tiger toes and you have the ball peg here. And the ball pegs are on all four limbs, which is very nice because it allows him to have ankle rockers and beast mode in all four limbs, which we don't always get, right? And then it has to like kind of always be in a pretty uh, static position, but this allows him to kind of get crouching, to get, you know, like he's on the hunt, like he's gonna pounce, like it, it, it gets a lot bang for its buck wise. I actually got caught up in the deco of him a bit. Let me cut this in. Uh, the head articulation, you get down to there, up to there, you actually get a little side to side on the head, so to speak, which is nice. And then the rear legs, which is kind of new articulation, right? You get back to there, forward to there, plus you get the hips movement here and out to the side. And then the feet stay the same. So all of that works well. The paint comes through. The proportions, once again, seem a little weird. Seems a little tight back in this end. And maybe the legs are a little bit too forward, you know, but... Um, that's an aesthetic thing. It's definitely my opinion. It may not be yours. You get this tail, you get a hinge here, here, a hinge side to side there, up and down here, and then another one side to side at the end, which is nice. No issues. I love the way the pistons come through. It matches kind of the silver deco up here. 
It's pretty cool, man. It's it's not terrible. In fact, I prefer this mode much over the robot mode. Uh, I think it does a pretty good job. You get the jaw articulation, which is a pretty wide. It's a little saber tooth tigery um, for me, but you know, whatevs. It's fine. I like it enough. And yeah, you know, everything is kind of locked in place. You still get a little bit of the swivel here. I don't know. I, I like this. This actually really works for me, honestly. So maybe it'll work for you. I think if you were going to do three modes of Predacons, like if they all look this good in alt mode, like I think that's a, a fine alt mode set, in my opinion. I don't know. Looks pretty good. Never as good next to Tiger Tracks, though, that handsome boy. Am I right? So let's get him in combine mode. Rotate the bicep 180. You got to wrap this back around, and you got to get the paws, doll paws, to tab in right now. Now, in order to do so, you kind of need to clear this part of the forearm again. God bless. And then bring it around so that it's sitting more parallel, whereas, you know, before it wasn't. And then you're going to tab in to the shoulder pad. And that will get you one arm done. Every good time is worth repeating, right? Perhaps even the bad times. So we'll do this again, wrap it up in order to kind of get that tab in the magic spot, so to speak. You gotta bring the foot around and just figure out a way where you get the best clearance by manipulating this hinge here to work around the ball peg. Bring it up and around, tab it in. Now we have to undo a lot of this and put it back how it was in robot mode. Remember, the key to this C-clip is that this moves here on this hinge. So, <laughs> forget it. Sorry, Joel. I'm frustrated. <clears throat> All right. If it comes off, it comes off. If it dies, it dies. Rotate that up. That's where you want to untab and rotate up to kind of keep it in place. Move the shoulder joints back up to where they were when you started this project. So, this one's being a little ornery. There it is. Now, once it's there, you can take your C-clip and as long as this hinge is up, it'll match back up with the slots there. That's all good. Bring the, ch the head of the tiger down. In order to do so, you do have to kind of untab this whole box that you built, so to speak. Bring it around and down and I get eight up as to how it goes as a series of hinges just you want it collapse tight against the chest then bring this back build your box so to speak again rotate your back flap around and cover down the best you can yeah. on that space and I'll build this back again, but you basically get it, right? Now we need to work on the lower section to give yourself a little bit more room, extend the waist. You could probably just do this in robot mode as well, I suppose. Um, it's gonna make the proportions even a little wonkier, but we have to untab everything that we've tabbed. So everything that made it pretty solid in Tiger mode, untab, untab, Explore, explore, oh Christ, there, one, told you it was solid, two, once you've got all that opened up, you're ready to untap some more by opening up the back pieces and then moving the tail up and you can just get this completely out of the way for now. Remember how we talked about the double jointed knees that don't really work in robot mode? Well, the reason why really is for this. So now we can use both joints at an angle and we have the kind of right length for the limb mode. More leg work. So open up this section here, fold this out. Take your two little flaps, tuck them back in. There's now another little flap. Oh, for crying out loud. Right here. 
that you have to fold out. Now, this has to sit in that groove. So in order for Stella to get her groove back, we also need to rotate so that the paws, the doll paws, are facing the opposite direction. But in order to do so, you need to manipulate that. Fold this down, collapse all of this. Now, this joint here, you want it to be folded in towards the front of the animal to a degree that will allow that gray peg to sit in that crevice and also for this to collapse. And it's tricky. Um, you can fold this up and this tab will secure into the robot foot and then I think for the dog paw you just have it kind of collapse against the bottom I'm not entirely sure I'll double check on that but that's what you're looking for ish now our favorite part we gotta get this red piece once again on the opposite side and the leg piece for the cat once again on the inner side Remember, you can move your knee pad down, you can move your knee pad and rotate the red piece around, anything to give you a little bit more clearance. Clarence Parents is a real good marriage, will help you out. So, rotate around. Remember, should this ball peg fail you at any point, uh, just you can snap it back on. All right, let's not say snap, right? Actually, let's try to go the other way. So let's bring this around this way and we'll try to finagle both. And if this, there's a screw here and maybe if you loosen up that screw, you'll have a little bit more luck. But now I got, you see I got the red one on the outside now by manipulating this piece and I need to move, good grief, this piece around to the other side and make sure that your hip skirt is down. Take your tab here and that plugs in to the thigh. Then you take your red kneecap, fold that around and it's gonna go down, but just remember we we're supposed to have this flap open as well. And then this piece has to tab in to the side like it was originally in robot mode. You wanna hear the good news? We got one more to go. Open up this and extend all of this. We gotta rotate this knee joint in, remember? And we have to rotate these flaps down. And we have to rotate this tab out. Now, that tab needs to sit inside of that groove and then it all needs to collapse. And it's just a matter of finding the right angle to do so. Your foot, this part of it needs to tab into there. So we got to get it around. But it, for some reason, it's a little tricky for me to figure out what the best angle is. And I think it's because of how tight that one hinge is. You see, it hinges down in here. But because it's so tight, it doesn't feel like it wants to, but it needs to in order to work. So just remember that for a little peace of mind. Tab your toe in. You can keep your doll paws out. Now, we got to get this red flap on the opposite side, and we got to get our orange piece on the inside. Remember, you can move everything around in order to accomplish this task, and it might be better to rotate the red and the leg the same direction, so they're both moving clockwise. Now, we have the red flap on the outside, just about. And we have our dog leg or cat leg on the inside. Remember, we can move this out 
to give ourselves a little bit more room. We want to tuck this down and this gray piece needs to go, and I don't have that collapsed right, inside of this thigh, which is not 100% right. There, and then the red flap rotates around and that tab tabs in to the side of the leg. You can bring this down. Remember to open up your orange flap. I need a break. Now we have a number of things to do to kind of get ready to put it all together. So you want to bring these down, tuck them in. These pieces you want to come up, lock into place. So we're going to do that on this side. And just sort of, you know, work until it works. There, love to see it. Take these flaps here that are on the pistons that we've been ranting and raving about, disconnect them, fold them up so that they cover the upper rear portion. God almighty in heaven. Of the thigh. Take your tail. Fold it over on itself, tab it into the back here, down and around, and this notch in the tail, I hope you can see it, is going to fit around these two slots here in the shins. Once again, just work until it works. As you're doing this, ah, uh, shoot. The problem is, is that you gotta also be connecting this stuff in the front. And there's a piece I missed here, which is this piece. This folds out. And is going to tab in to two tabs there. And I'll tell you, that makes me a little nervous. And I'm not sure, honestly, that you need it. Like it's extra stability, I guess, but I'm just not sure that you need it because it's pretty solid without. All right, now take your hip skirts, just like we did before, but lock them this time in to the thigh in these slots here. And in, in order to get it where you need it, manipulate the hinge that's connected to the ball peg on both sides. Great Guga Muga. Lastly, fold out your combiner peg here, which is styled the same way as Zeta and Toy World. Whew, and you're good to go. I'll clean it up. I'll see if I can get that hand on better. We'll take a look at it. And I can't. Uh, you could probably get it better and mess with it more. I'm not going to. Um, so, I mean, you have a bicep swivel. You know, all of this will rotate around and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and you have your elbow. Uh, it's really tight, which is ultimately good, I suppose. You had this joint here. I think it was the Superion that had the piece that like rotated and moved, like you pulled out and pulled against. This doesn't seem to have that. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to. Oh, yeah, maybe it does. No, it's just forced, though. It's not out and in. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty, man. Like, it's pretty. I need to see the combined mode before I make a decision on this. We'll talk about that a bit more in Final Thoughts. It's solid. It's pretty. Uh, I'll show you a size here. It's the same size as the Superion. Uh, like, the pictures have been circulating with it on Superion, so it's in that scale. There's a lot of potential here. It's how they do Razor Claw. I'll show it to you with a Zeta, and then we'll move on to Final Thoughts. So, and you got to pardon me, I'm standing on a stool. Um, I mean, it's just about equal. My wife would kill me if she saw me stand on a stool like this, like I'm an idiot with one camera. I'm leaning back in this time, I'm a moron. But um, pretty much in scale, so there is potential here. It's how they handle their proportions there. Time will tell.
Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negative. I have noticed a few stress marks throughout the piece. Not enough to have earned the stress mark song, mind you, but enough where I need to mention it. The C clips are clunky and it's constantly popping off, similarly to a lot of the decisions that they make with the ball pegs, but it may be that perhaps it's a blessing because it's not the most elegant of clearances engineering wise, which ultimately leads to pieces popping off rather than pieces failing. And that may be ultimately a blessing. My other issue is that aesthetically, I think the robot mode looks looks bad. And it's not because it's stylized. It's because I don't like the way it looks. And the proportions are weird. The face sculpt is ugly. All of those things are completely subjective, but it's my opinion. It doesn't look attractive. It looks unattractive, in fact. I also think the proportions are a little weird in cat mode, but I do think that cat mode works better overall. Also, engineering wise, a lot of the pieces are too tight and it makes the entire process unenjoyable when you reach certain components, namely the gray piece that's responsible for a large amount of the more complicated elements of engineering regarding the lower legs. Lastly, the thing I need to comment on is that so much of this depends for me on Razor Claw. I can't make a decision based on this. This didn't blow me away enough to go in on the set when I haven't seen Razor Claw. If Razor Claw and the combined mode seem to follow suit, I'm probably in, in terms of combined mode, but I refuse to gamble and lose again. There are plenty of positives as well, though. It's beautifully painted. The articulation is pretty much perfect. The deco, just in terms of variety, is interesting. Chrome, die cast, silver, tampo paint, metallic paint, flat plastics, etc., etc. It's a very dynamic looking figure in that regard. If the clearances, tolerances, and build were done more elegantly, the engineering would be classified as intuitive and satisfying, but it has a hard time getting out of its own way in order to pull all of those things off successfully with the amount of things that's making sure that one hand is constantly tied behind its back. The materials feel good. It feels like sturdy plastic. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. It cleans up fairly well in all modes. It has die cast, decent weight, and due to its size, a decent enough presence. So I'm on the fence, but I need to see Razor Claw, and I can't give you sound advice until I see that box portion. But if you're in it for cat mode, I can tell you that I did like that the best. Hope that helps. Hope to look at the rest. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.